We have talked a lot about K-pop idols who break boundaries and make history, but none of them have done it quite like Harry Sue, who is known as the first transgender idol in the industry. From dealing with bigotry and threats to having a successful career as an entertainer, this is the full story of Hara Sue. Born in 1975 in Songnam as male at birth, Hari Sue felt like a woman ever since she was a child. Her friends and family noticed this too, saying she looked and acted like a girl from early on. When she was a teenager, she had a bad relationship with a guy, and she came to the realization that she had to have surgery to change her gender. It must have been a terrifying experience, especially since she went to an all-boys school, but by the time she finished school, she was already taking hormones. This is the reason why she was exempt from serving in the military, as they considered the fact that she wanted to transition as a mental illness. In the late 1990s, Harry Sue had various surgeries in Korea and Japan to look more like a woman, which included enhancing her chest, fixing her nose, getting hip enlargement surgery, and changing her reproductive organs. The surgery was done by Kim Sok Kwan, a well-known transition doctor in Korea. At first, her family didn't approve of her transition, especially her father. Harisu said that they weren't angry but were very upset about it and had a difficult time accepting her as their daughter. Thankfully, they came to terms with it later on and are very supportive of her career to this day. In 2000, everything changed for Harisu when a model scout saw her in a Japanese nightclub during the time she was living there. The scout was impressed by her beauty, so they made her an offer to join TTM Entertainment, a South Korean agency, and Harisu didn't hesitate before agreeing. This wasn't her first brush with the entertainment industry, though, as she had been cast in some supporting roles in various TV shows when she was still a boy. She also started using the stage name Harry Sue, which was derived from the English phrase hot issue. Before this, she had a lot of trouble getting cast as a transgender woman. She shared a memory from a casting meeting where the agents had told her they liked her and asked her to sign a contract. However, Harry Sue let them know that she was transgender, which is when the agents got very inappropriate. They told her to take her clothes off because they wanted to check if she was telling the truth and told her she had to sleep with them to really prove that she was transgender. Such terrifying occasions left Harisu scarred forever. She went on to say, People would cancel my contract after signing me. Some PD even said that as long as he was in charge, he would never let me go on TV. It's terrible that she had to go through this in the first place, but unfortunately, it's a reality of many transgender people. Soon after the incident, she joined TTM Entertainment and the CEO of Dodo Cosmetics, Lim Yongsong, also took notice of her and convinced the company to make her an offer. The offer was that they would feature her in one of their commercials, in exchange of her revealing her biggest secret, which was that she was transgender. Taking advantage of the lack of queer portrayals on Korean TV, Dodo's ad aimed to grab the audience's interest by revealing that Harisu is transgender in the last scene of the ad. This would mean that she would be telling her truth on national television, but Harisu was ready to take the risk. However, what really mattered in her accepting the offer was that she would be taking part in an ad that would imply that the face powder she was advertising could change not just how she looked, but also how people saw her. To prove this, Dodo had Harisu appear in the ad with the words Red Liar written on her body. They also zoomed into her digitally added Adam's apple as Harisu didn't have a noticeable Adam's apple. On the reason why she decided to come out, she said that she didn't want to be dishonest with people and after all, she wouldn't be able to keep this secret for long, so she decided to be open about it from the beginning of her career. You would think that a country as conservative as Korea would have negative reactions towards the ad, but actually, the opposite ended up happening. After the commercial aired, people began saying that Harisu was prettier than a woman. It was also reported that the year that the commercial aired, Dodo Cosmetics' profits went up from 3 billion to 70 billion won. However, the only person who didn't like the ad was Harisu herself. She didn't know that they would add an Adam's apple on her throat, so it's said that when the ad was shown, Harisu apparently yelled out evil at the TV. In this ad, which was seen as iconic, Dodo Cosmetics had secretly made her look more masculine causing Harisu to feel a mix of surprise and shock. Criticism also started pouring in, with people accusing Dodo Cosmetics of exploiting Harisu. One of the critics said, The company uses Harisu as a commodity to increase sales and play to their customers' desires for consumption and their very own transformations. Through this reading, it is clear that Harisu is treated as a commodity. Karma was on Harisu's side, though. In just a year, she got numerous opportunities, including a KBS documentary delving into her life, including her childhood, family ties, and entry into the entertainment industry. She also starred in a 2001 movie called Yellow Hair 2, which was her first big role. Not only did she actually take part in the movie's soundtrack, but she also played the role of a transgender biker. On the reason why she wanted to take part in the film, Harry Sue said, I wanted to break the stereotype of transgenders, the demureness and extreme weakness with which they are often portrayed. That wasn't all for Harry Sue, though. In the same year, she published her biography, Eve from Adam, and appeared on the music video of the dance group Turbo for their track history. Maybe it was 
was here that she got the inspiration to enter the music industry herself, as in September of 2001, she released her own album, Temptation. The album showed Harisu's music versatility the best, as it included pop songs as well as ballads, and despite the fact that she was considered a bit unconventional for the industry, the album peaked at number 32 Music Industry Association of Korea K-pop Albums chart. Her second album, Liar, was even more successful, as it reached 23 on the charts on the month it was released. She did more than that. She acted in a TV series in Taiwan, sang at Korean-American cultural events in Los Angeles, and even wrote a book with beauty tips specifically for Japanese women. These are just a few examples of how her fame goes beyond borders, and it said a lot about how popular she was. A year after the infamous ad, Harisu filed a request with the Incheon District Court to officially change her gender on her family record. She also wanted her birth name to be switched from Lee kyung Yop to Lee kyung Un, which sounded more feminine. According to Harisu, my most embarrassing moments were when I had to show my personal identification card in public. I couldn't get a passport, visa, or even my own bank accounts because I was legally a man. The court took her side, and on December 13, 2002, she became the second person in South Korea to legally change their gender. After her second album was released, she stumbled into problems with her management company, which is when she decided to leave. The troubles wouldn't end there, though, as they made it hard for her even when she left. TTM Entertainment stated they own the rights to her stage name and declared that they had plans to use it to promote other artists. Harisu didn't back down, and instead of letting her company have her name, she took the issue to court. As a result of the long legal battle, the court ruled in Harisu's favor, letting her keep the name. After that, she started her own company, G&F Entertainment, to have more control over her career decisions. In February, she launched her third album, Foxy Lady, which had a different style from her previous albums. Maybe it was because of this that the album didn't make it to the top 50 on the Korean charts, but Harisu didn't care. In 2004, Harisu started expanding her career abroad because she felt tired of being typecast as a transgender person in Korea. So, to escape this, she chose to move to Taiwan and landed her initial job there in a show called High Honey, alongside Eli Shi and Pace Wu. Her major opportunity in Taiwan was modeling for sanitary napkins, for which she earned about 100 million won. Later on, she also decided to re-record songs from her Foxy Lady album in Mandarin and launch them in China and Taiwan. In September 2005, Harry Su also made her mark in Malaysia by agreeing to a three-year deal with Hawkstar Entertainment, an arrangement which involved creating two movies and ensuring the release of her album in Malaysia. She openly talks about the unfair treatment that queer and transgender people face in Korea during interviews. Some of these are her personal experiences. She posted screenshots of the user's messages where they call her a disgusting human being and a pathetic human, in addition to insulting her appearance and telling her to take her life. In her caption under the picture, Harisu seems unfazed by the comments and suggests that those bothered by her should avoid her social media. She said, even though you're worried about me, I'm legally a woman, so there's nothing to be gained from telling me I'm not a woman. No matter where I go, my passport and my rights tell me I'm a woman. I'm not shaken by a few words like this, so get lost. Additionally, she revealed that she's been hit on by hundreds of celebrities, including singers, actors, comedians, and athletes. Harisu also said that a male celebrity wanted to date her with the intention of marriage, but she had rejected him. But Harisu has used her influence to help the queer community. It's known that she financially helped a woman in China who couldn't afford transition. In addition to that, following the tragic passing of Kim ji hoo who took his own life, she launched a transgender club called Mix Trans in Seoul. Her acting roles in Korea, where she played transgender characters, played a role in raising awareness of transgender individuals in Korea and in the film industry. Her career has also been a source of inspiration for many artists, including K-pop's first transgender group, Lady. She's still considered a symbol of South Korea moving forward politically and culturally and becoming a more modern nation with a more accepting outlook on different identities. Even though they have a long way to go, it's still a step in the right direction.